Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? I hope everyone is staying safe and trying to mingle with this current situation. So from now on, we are going to continue our classes online. As you may already remember, normally I already I, I really like to switch my teaching styles time to time. So this will be another switch. And uh, I hope you will like it. We will enjoy it. This is a little bit different, but I think it will be efficient, really efficient. And I will do my best to make it more efficient and efficient. And uh, so before I start to talk about section 7.1, we are very, this the section where we are left off. I, I, I already made an a, a detailed announcement actually about the new online system. So from now on, we are gonna use Alex uh, instead of WebWork. Alex is more uh, engaging, more interactive learning tool. And it's also, it also gives feedback to you. This is also very nice. So uh, and we are gonna do our quizzes there, our new homeworks over there, and also tests over there. So Alex will be very really useful in the rest of the semester and, and normally uh, okay this week uh, we will continue our weekly quizzes and but this week will be no quiz actually there will be no quiz this week but you will start having quizzes starting next week but other than that everything looks okay if you have any problem any questions you can always let me know and we can try to work on that, okay? So, are you guys ready to start? Okay, all right. So, as you may remember, last time we finished at section seven, no, 6.3, it was about inverse trigonometric functions. And now we are going to chapter seven, and chapter seven is all about trigonometric identities, trigonometric equations. So, so far up to this point, you have seen equations that have some algebraic expressions like, right? For example, x plus five is seven. How can you solve this, right? This type of issues, this type of problems. From now on, we are gonna have uh, equations that has trigonometric functions in it. For example, sine x plus five is equal to 27, something like that. So we are gonna deal with this type of equations and we are gonna try to solve these type of equations, all right? And so let me start sharing my screen. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, so let me put my, okay, it's over there. You can also see me at the same time while I am lecturing. As I said, the chapter seven will be about trigonometric identities and equations. And at the beginning, we are gonna start with section 7.1. And 7.1 is about solving trigonometric equations with identities. And we have seen the identities already before, right? You, you, you should remember all these identities, but uh, I'm gonna remember, I'm gonna remind all of them actually today in this part. So first of all, what are the reciprocal identities? They are, as you may remember, cosecant is equal to one over sine, secant is equal to so maybe I can also try to draw, yes. Cosecant is equal to one over sine. Secant is equal to one over cosine. Cotangent is equal to one over tangent, right? You remember that? Maybe I can pick another color. Color. I like blue. Okay. All right. And of course, you can switch these identities and uh, obtain these equivalent reciprocal identities. Sine is equal to one over cosecant. Cosine is equal to one over secant. And tangent is equal to one over cotangent, okay? And what are the quotient identities? Tangent is equal to sine over cosine. Cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. These are all coming from the definitions, as you may remember. And now what about the Pythagorean identities? Let me remind you them as well. Of course, the most important one is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. The next one is sine squared plus one is equal to secant squared. And one plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. And actually the 
the, the second and the third one is coming from the first one. The second and th third identity is coming from the first one. And and you remember we have some even out situations for trigonometric functions, right? And oops, okay. All right. So and you remember we were using an analogy for that being hungry or not. And uh, the only hungry function, actually there are two functions, hungry, which is cosine and uh, secant, right? Secant is actually one over cosine, that's why it's also hungry. Hungry means they are gonna eat minus sign, right? So cosine minus x is equal to minus cosine x, okay? And similarly, secant, my, okay, let me, I can also maybe make it rectangular. And secant minus x is equal to secant x. As you see here, these guys are eating this minus sign, right? But all other functions other than these two are not hungry. They don't eat minus, so they just pull out the minus, okay? So sine minus x is equal to minus sine x. Tangent minus x is equal to minus tangent x. And so on and so forth, okay? So these are how trig functions deal with minus sign inside the parentheses. All right, these are just some reminder from previous chapter sections and chapters. So now, uh, oh, okay. Now what will be our strategy to prove or verify identities? So there's, these are some nice tricks to do that. Maybe we can go over them quickly. Always start with the most complicated sites. Use basic trigonometric identities. Use algebraic operations such as distributive property, factoring and multiplying by the conjugate. And the commonly used conjugates are, if you see one over sine, you can use one over, so one plus sine, you can use one minus sine. If you see one plus cosine, one minus cosine. If you see secant plus tangent, you can use secant minus tangent. Cosecant plus cotangent, cosecant minus cotangent. And while, try, while trying to add and subtract fractions, you can use, of course, these common divisors to write them as a single function. And try to write a single fraction as two fractions by splitting, the, splitting up the numerator. These are all nice tricks. You will, see very use, you will find them very useful in the coming examples. But I'm just going over them quickly. Try writing everything in terms of sine and cosine. Yes, this is the uh, maybe one of the most important uh, trick here. If nothing happens, if nothing works, you can always try to rewrite everything in sine and cosine. I mean, if you have tangent, for example, in your function, in your equation, you can write rewrite tangent as sine over cosine, and so on and so forth. Okay, so and then simplify them. Okay. Work with only one side of the identity and you can see the, that the one side is equal to the other side. All right, so these are main uh, identities we are gonna use. Let me go over quick here and again. These are the identities and these are some strategies to do that. In the next video, videos maybe, I'm gonna work on examples, okay? And you will see uh, how these identities and these strategies are working on some specific examples. All right, okay, see you in the next video. Okay. Sharing and stop recording.